Say I were to take two Rubik's Cubes, one of them scrambled, one of them not. What are the chances I could take this one, do a few turns under the table, and when I bring it back up, the two scrambles match each other? Well, that would be some pretty absurd number, but today, that is exactly what we are going to try to do. Okay, so the question that probably comes to mind is what is the actual chance of this happening? So to figure this out, we're going to have to figure out how many different scramble combinations there are on a Rubik's Cube. And to calculate this, what we're going to do is calculate all the corner combinations and multiply that by the number of edge combinations. So what we do is we're going to take the number of edges, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and make that factorial. And what that means is just eight times seven times six and so on until you get to one, eight factorial and multiply it by the number of different colors on a single piece, in this case is three, and raise three to the power of remaining corner pieces. So minus this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So three to the power of seven, and that is our first calculation. Now we're going to do the exact same thing with edges. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 edges on a Rubik's cube. So we are multiplying this by 12 factorial, just like before. Now times the number of colors on an edge, that is two, and we raise that to the power of remaining edges, which is 11. Just take all 12 edges and subtract the one. And now this isn't it, there's one more thing to consider. We have to do parity, and parity is when you swap just two pieces by themselves, which isn't a possible case. So that actually eliminates half of the possible solutions. So we take this whole thing, and put it over two. And the answer is 43 quintillion, 252 quadrillion, 3 trillion, 274 billion, 489 million, 856,000. That is our answer. One over this number is the chances of matching a solved cube to a cube scramble. And in fact, that is the same chances of taking a scrambled cube and then matching it to the solved cube. So how am I going to do this? Well, there are ways that we are going to get into, but first I have to see if I can just do it on my own with my eyes. All right, so I can solve a Rubik's Cube on average in about 10 seconds. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra time because I'm doing it backwards and it's a little confusing. So the goal is going to be 60 seconds. Can I do this in under a minute? All right, here's my scramble. Let's get going. All right, so how I'm going to go about this is I'm just going to match this first layer really quick. We have this orange piece is already solved. And now this green and red piece is right here. These two pieces match. Now I need my yellow and green, which I can just get like this. Orange, green, and white is right here. All I have to do is flip it around like this. Now I need my blue and yellow. Now for the last piece is going to be blue, red, and yellow, which is this one with red on top. All right, and there we have the top layer matched. Now we just have to do the rest. So this is done just like F2L. You have to find your next piece. In this case, my green and white over here. And I just have to line it up and insert it just like an F2L pair but I'm bad, so I put it in backwards. All right, that fixes it, and we have to do the same thing for the other four F12 pieces. Now for the top, and this is probably the trickiest part. So we're just gonna start with our edges. The pieces that are in their right orientation is our red and yellow, and then our green and orange right here. So that means that these two pieces are incorrect, so I can do this, and that makes all four of the pieces facing the right direction. And now I need to figure out where the corner pieces are. This is a soon case, and because of the orientation of this one, I know that it's this soon case. And now we have to do PLL. The U -perm. All right, so what I am noticing is that I am actually really bad at this, and OLL is not complete. I need to do this OLL. And now they should all be complete. Now I need to look at PLL. So I have a big block right here. This is solved, which means this is solved, which means it is likely an A perm. And that is just simply this algorithm. Now I do U2. And with that, every single face on the cube is now matching. So first attempt took a minute and 37 seconds. I have a little bit of work to do. Round two, 
Going into this challenge, I thought it was just gonna be some simple little prerequisite to matching the scramble blindfolded, but boy was I wrong. All right, so I got a plus two on this one, but it was 225 anyway. All right, so I noticed that I've been spending a lot of time trying to figure out which cube is which. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cube that doesn't look like this one to be my scramble cube. Never thought I'd have a practical use for one of these. Alrighty, scramble number three. 142, dude, I'm not even close. Attempt number four. Attempt number five. Attempt number seven. Attempt 10. Attempt 14, 110, we're getting close. Attempt 17. All right, it is day two, and I believe this is attempt number 20. No way. Oh, okay, I have it wrong. Dude, attempt number 21. Ain't no way, bro. I'm busy right now. I ain't quit YouTube, bro. All right, I'll, I'll talk to you later. I'll see you tomorrow. No, 101. I was so close. Attempt number 24. Attempt number 30. No way. Look at how absurdly close I was, dude. Dude. That's... Twice in a row that I was less than a second away. Come on, man. No. Attempt 35. Attempt 36. 101. Come on. No way. There's no way. This is 50 seconds but they don't match. Oh my goodness. 50 seconds, I would have been really, oh my goodness, no way. I had no idea this was gonna be so hard, but that doesn't mean I was gonna give up. Attempt 47. Let's go! Yeah, that was pretty insane, and we're not even done yet. I still have to do this whole thing with a blindfold. But first, y'all, look at this massive package that I just got. It was sent to me by speedcubeshop.com, and I'm going to be unboxing it in my next video, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. And also, if you want some pretty insane products like this shirt, or this mini mat, or really any other Rubik's Cube that you can think of, then go to speedcubeshop.com, link in the description, and use discount code K4Cubing for 5% off your entire order. It's pretty much just free money. All right, so if I'm going to be able to do this blindfolded, I'm going to need to have a plan. And right now, I don't have any plan. I just simply have an idea and I don't know if it's going to work. So to start off, we're going to have to know how to solve a Ruby's Cube blindfolded in general. All right, so the basic idea of advanced blind solving is taking three pieces and doing a short algorithm to swap them around with each other. And now how we can use this, I can know that this piece needs to go here and then this piece needs to go here. And with that knowledge, I can do this algorithm and it will swap the pieces around to solve each other. And now when there are more pieces than just the three, you can do the same idea. This piece needs to go here and then here. One short algorithm will solve those two pieces and then I can do the same thing again. These two are solved and so on until the end. Now that's one part of it, but aside from solving, there's also memorization. Now memorization doesn't change anything I just taught you. How this works is that every single tile on the cube is assigned a letter. This tile right here is C, and that's where we always start. This tile needs to go to here, which is G, and this tile needs to go to here, which is V. So instead of memorizing where these pieces need to go, I can just memorize the string of letters G, V. Now this will continue to L, T, U, Q, and then M, R, J, R. 
So if I've memorized this string of letters in my head and I have everything I need to solve this. So we break this into sets of two letters and each two letter combination corresponds with an algorithm. First algorithm, G to V looks like this. Now G and V have both been solved. And now, as you can see, we can move on to L to T. That looks like this. L and T are both solved and so on. U to Q, M to R, and L to R. So if I'm trying to match this cube to this one, in theory, I can just memorize the scramble of this one and then put it in reverse. And if I execute this backwards, this cube should match this one. So before I test this with a full solve, I'm going to test it on the small scale. So first we're gonna start with one commutator and then two, and then we'll try the whole thing. So if I look at this very simple scramble, I can memorize my letters that will be B, F. And now if I take those letters and put them in reverse, F to B and execute that here, the scrambles now match each other. So it does work with one commutator and I kind of knew that intuitively, so let's test it with two. All right, so I've added a commutator to this one and now the scramble is a little more complicated. So now what the scramble looks like is J, K, B, F. And that reverse is F, B, K, J. So let's, let's execute that. All right, so they don't quite match each other. They're a little bit off. All right, so this is getting a little bit confusing, so I'm gonna use this sheet of paper to try to keep track of what's going on. So I have down here, scramble, which represents what this is, and now solution, which represents what I need to do here. Now, if you look at what I've written, it doesn't make sense. Why did I flip the first one and not the second one? Well, that's because that's what works, and I don't understand why it works either. So that's what we're going to have to figure out, but look, if I execute F to B, and then I execute J to K instead of K to J. All right guys, I just realized that I'm really bad at cubing. When I originally did the solution, F, B, and then K, J, which is simply the inverse of this, when I went to execute K to J, I did it backwards, and that's why it didn't work. So we're going to test this again on a new scramble. All right, that, that worked, holy cow. That's frustrating that I just wasted so much time. All right, so now that we know that this works, it's time to test it on the full scale. All right, so here's my scramble and I'm going to write down the solution really quick. All right, so I've written down the scramble, here's scramble and here's it inverted for the solution that I'm going to try to execute. All right, let's compare the scrambles. Top layer matches, wait. This doesn't make much sense. All right, so something's gone very strangely wrong here where there's just simply a cycle of these three pieces. All right, because this attempt was so absurdly close, there is a chance I might have made an execution error, so we are going to try again. Solution's done, let's compare. No, my goodness, it's off by one swap again. What is wrong? All right, we are going to have to figure out what's going on here. All right, so I just tried the same scramble again and it worked. What probably happened was I'm just bad at cubing and I did the wrong moves. So yeah, after a third attempt, I finally got it to work without changing anything. So I guess now we can try it for real with like, without writing down the solution. Here we go, I hope this wasn't as hard as last time. All right, I'm gonna do a normal line solve to warm up and then we'll get started. Attempt number one. I can't believe I just messed up the first algorithm. All right. All right, this first attempt was actually really close. I was only really off by a slice move, which messed up a couple other things, but that gives me hope that this just might not take that long. Attempt number two. No, I was one calm off. This is only the second try and that was less than three minutes, which means I might be able to do this pretty easily, which is which is quite a relief after what happened in the last challenge. What's that, 47 tries, I think? 47? Attempt number three. 
Attempt number four. Dude, I'm off by just one edge cycle. Attempt number five. Attempt number six. I got all the edges this time, but I messed up corners. Wait a minute. No. I did my last calm backwards. No way. <sighs> Attempt number seven. Yes, that's it, let's go. Tell me how that took a quarter of the time of the other challenge. What the heck? One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go. Bro, this video took a really crazy turn from its original idea. I, I didn't expect this, but this is now the longest video up on my channel, and I really hope y'all enjoyed it. Now, if I can solve this scramble in under 10 seconds, you have to subscribe. Nine twenty-nine. y'all have to do it, subscribe!